morning, traders. I'm Dennis Dick. And I'm Joel L. Conan. Welcome to Pre-Market Info. Well, let's take a look at the market here this morning and the big mover, Apple, over $700 this I morning. I predicted that. I <laughs> predicted that. Good job there, Joel. We're going to take a look at the FedEx earnings. Uh, stock lowering guidance for the full year, trading down a bit here in the pre-market. The AMD CFO resigns, and then we're going to look at a bunch of upgrades and downgrades here today. Financials overall week as well here. Joel, what's your market thoughts? Uh, we came down and uh, tested a good level yesterday. Uh, we came down to 1450.50. The Monday's low, Friday's low was right there. Yeah. Uh, we kissed against it in the pre market, yeah. 1449. As long as we hold that, that level, 1450, we're still we're going to 1500, 1600, 1700. Yeah, it's held that 1449 is the low here in the pre market. So Joel has given you a good number here. We had this little blip here down. We had the big move on the Bernanke spike. You had that little blip down to 1449 that's where we're grabbing that number from and then we obviously spiked up the next day to 1466 have slowly drifted down and they're finding a little bit of support here in this 1449 the reason we need to hold this number is that below that you have all this air from the run-up from that Bernanke uh, spike so if it does breach that whole 1449 1448 area then the market starts to open up into that vacuum area which would make us really nervous so if to stay bullish this market we'd really like to see the market hold this 1448-1449 area. And FedEx is putting a little bit of pressure here on the market this morning. They had actually announced or pre-announced there a few weeks ago. While they announced earnings here this morning and the stocks, uh, they beat $1.45 against their lower estimates of $1.40, but they lowered for Q2. Uh, they're going to make a dollar thirty to a dollar forty-five against estimates of a buck sixty-seven, so a pretty big lower. And they lowered for the full year, estimating six twenty to six sixty. Analyst estimates were up at seven oh four. So FedEx trading down here about a buck and a half in the pre-market, but it actually got lower than that uh, on the announcement. Yeah, it got down to uh, eighty-six oh three uh, just after that announcement. Yep. Uh, that it coincides with a low that you had back on September six at eighty-five eighty-seven. Uh, so eighty-six, we're a buck seventy away from there. Big so, bounce uh, off that eighty-six. Yeah, that's that's a huge bounce. Uh, couldn't quite uh, sneak back into at yesterday's range with an 88.92 low. So, boy, I tell you, with it trading as low as 86, uh, you got to believe that 88 handle is going to thicken up with sellers uh, all the way up to that low at 88.92. Uh, but we were talking about this before before the show started. I mean, they pre-announce, they lower, they beat, they rally, they pre-announce, they break. I mean, it's just... You know, is it going to be able to come back again this time? Yeah, well, the last couple of times, the last time they announced earnings, uh, even three months ago, they actually announced earnings, and then the stock did sell off on the earnings, but then it bounced back again. Then they pre-announced there just a few weeks ago, stock sold off, bounced back. Uh, they obviously, today they announced, and, and we were saying this 86, I was saying it yesterday on the show, that 86 is a big level. You've got to really look at these old numbers, and if you're trading these things in the pre-market, somebody got a great buy at 86.03, and it traded a lot of stock in that 86.50 area, because that 86 level was big, and it bounced right off there again. Obviously, that is the big level. But the last couple times it has bounced, uh, um, so it wouldn't surprise me if the bounce continues in this thing too. People want to own this company, FedEx and UPS. I mean, they've got a whole they're they're into the whole internet you know, marketing uh, area there too, Joel, because they ship all the Amazon products. They ship, you know, everybody's buying stuff online now, and these are the companies that ship those products. Yeah, well, it, but if uh, if their earnings That's, are starting to that, slow down, exactly. doesn't isn't that a precursor to uh, QE four? <laughs> Q well, <laughs> we have QE forever, so we don't even need QE four anymore because we have QE forever. But yeah, FedEx can be definitely a gauge of uh, of of the mark of of uh, firms there that sell products online. So it can be a gauge to companies like Amazon, but. It's just people that like to own this stock. Every time it seems to have bad news, it does seem to bounce back. And it bounced back very quickly this morning off that 86 level and trading up at 87.78 now. And uh, a little bit of a spillover effect uh, over into UPS. 
Uh, that got as low as 73.05. Haven't got quite a big a bounce in that stock uh, as you have in FedEx. Uh, FedEx will obviously be your leader today. Uh, had a nice, uh, nice uptrend going here before uh, before that FedEx news came out. Uh, 73.44. Uh, was yesterday's low, even though it did trade below that in the pre-market, uh, I'd use that as a swing number. Yes, if you for you longer-term traders too, the 72 bucks is huge. Go back to June 5th, we had a low of 72.15. We cut through it a bit in September, but the 72 still held here overall. If I go out to the weeklies, you can just see this whole 72 area is definitely critical for the stock to hold because below that it starts to open up a bit. So I'd keep 72 as my bogey. If I'm picking up 73 for a swing trade or something, 72 is probably where I'm looking and starting to get nervous if it starts to breach that. And the low on September the 6th was 71.62, so that would be my probably absolute bogey if I'm trying to pick a, a bottom in UPS. Uh, lots of other stocks in the news, but let's start with the big gun, Apple trading over 700. It was just a while ago. I'd bring it up here now. It's actually trading back down below at 699.70, but it has been trading over 700 in the after hours. There it is. Just ticked above 700 again, but did trade below uh, or above 700 after hours, trading above it here in the pre-market. Bank America raising the price target to 850 from 770. So another analyst jumping on the <laughs> Apple bandwagon here. But this $700 level is still critical. I was saying, I tweeted out last night, you've got to consider it closes 699.80 and everybody's, oh, it's over 700 now. It hasn't ticked over 700 in the regular session yet. And what happens is once the liquidity comes in at 930, like 99% of your participants don't trade in the pre-market or after hours. So a lot of liquidity does come in at the 930 open. So that will dictate really where the stock goes. So if it can take out that liquidity and start trading over 700 in the regular session, then I would say it's over 700. But right now, it's still kind of just hanging out here, and I bet you you're going to have some uh, large institutional sellers maybe lightening that up here a bit at 700 once the regular session opens. Yeah, really, the only reference point I can give traders here is 70280. Uh, that's what it hit in the pre-market. So if you absolutely have to sell this stock, I either look at the 7280 level um, as a potential uh, entry on a short or to exit a long position. Uh, another another trick on a day like this, uh, you know, if you, you know you're going to take heat if you shorted at 700 the first time, right? Because it's going to blow through probably. there. But a lot of times. It will trade above this level. Let's say it traded up to 70250 near that pre-market high and then came back down below 700. I mean, I just I mean, I don't see who will be bidding for that stock except people that are short. Yeah, it well, everybody and it becomes a sentiment thing again. Oh, it's over 700, it's going to 800. You get the bandwagon jumpers here too. So, it seems like every time Apple pulls back, it does find buyers, but there is always that we always say breakout, breakout over 700. A lot of times, Joel, you're right, that does you get that fake out sometimes, and all of a sudden it starts trading below 700. Everybody that bought it, oh, it's over 700, it's going to 8. Then it starts trading down to 695 and 690 and they're like, "Ah, throw in the towel." And that's sometimes the best uh, buy is actually when it breaks up over it and then comes back through it, like you were saying, and maybe you pick it up, you know, in the 680s or 690s if it was to do that. But it's always difficult to predict the exact movement of a stock, which we're, we're kind of yeah. trying to do here. So right, just to close out on the Apple, uh, just to alert traders, uh, you only had a five-point range yesterday, uh, a little over a five-point range. So uh, you know, if the range can, if the if the range continue to contract and you get a double top there or a triple top uh maybe uh something to be alerted to in apple uh the amd cfo resigned there yesterday i'll take that trend line off there us uh, he resigned the stock trading down here again this is one We've obviously not given a lot of love to on the show. We're going to continue to not give it love here. 367 is where it's trading right now. That low of 343 is probably the bogey if you're trying to pick a bottom. That thing starts making new lows. I wouldn't want to own it below 343, but I'll be honest with you. I wouldn't want to own this stock at all. Uh, every time it just rallies up here, it's just a good opportunity to sell. As you can see, we just continue to drift down, drift down, and we're down here again. Never any good news coming out of AMD. I mean, if Intel is struggling, AMD is really struggling. 
Right. That 343 coincides with the pre-market low at 348. So uh, if you're looking to bring in a short there, the whole uh, 350 level should uh, should be noted. Uh, you can't really uh, scoff at the volume here. It's traded three qu over three quarters of a million shares here in the pre-market. Alcoa getting downgraded at Jefferies oh, here. Oh, poor Alcoa! It's had a nice run though. You got to give it a little bit of Woo, props. Went from eight bucks to ten bucks basically in the last month and a half, but now starting to settle down and starting to sell off here again. Nine forty-eight is where it's trading this morning on the Jefferies downgrade. So it's down a dime on the Jefferies downgrade. Obviously, we haven't given this one love either for good reason. The stock, if you go back, obviously, in the monthlies, back in the, before the financial crisis, this was a $40 stock. It's a stock that has never come back. I don't know if it ever is going to come back, but $10 becomes a huge psychological barrier now, especially since we put in another top there, just below $10 at 993 uh, Pulling back now so the bear's got some food to chew on with that uh, 993 top up there. Uh, you've got this vicious uptrend going. Going, and we're probably opening right at the bottom of that trend, but I don't know. I don't know if I could be a buyer of Alcoa here. Have, have you ever heard the term in horse racing, uh, a horse kind of gets sucked along with the pack? You think... Have you ever heard that term before? <laughs> I'm not into horses as much as you, yeah, but I'll believe well, you on it. That just means that you have a really terrible horse, but uh, a bunch of faster horses get out in front of him, and he just kind of like keeps up with them until like the last quarter of the race, and then he completely falls apart. Uh, well, this kind of looks like Alcoa got sucked along with the market here, uh, rallying up uh, for, I don't know if they announced earnings or anything, but uh, whatever got them to rally from 841 to uh, uh, 993, it, whew, that's a huge rally for this stock. A lot of air underneath. We are trading down in the pre-market. You did have a 930 low back on the 13th of this month, so keep an eye on that level, 18 cents away from it. And uh, the pre-market low has been 9.48. Just kind of been a little, just a little trickle down, no spike down yet. General Motors just got upgraded at Buckingham's. Also, uh, European auto sales were uh, announced there this morning as well. But General Motors trading up here pretty good here in the pre-market, Joel. 24.39 it just ticked to after closing 23.80. And here's another stock. Uh, give some love to the D. This stock's been on a tear for the last two months. Yeah, it looks like uh, Warren, uh, who dipped his toe in around the twenty twenty one dollar level here. Uh, good on this one. I wonder, I wonder if he's going to scalp out of it like he did the intra <laughs> Intel trade. Did you see that he scalped Intel? Yeah, he says he says he's not a trader, but meanwhile I see him selling stocks here and there. He's becoming a trader too. He'll be a high frequency trader pretty soon. That Warren Buffett. <laughs> <laughs> well, it got up to a uh, twenty four fifty in the pre market right now. Yeah, yeah, it's trading right up there. You got this little island top up here. You had a top at a uh, twenty four eighty seven. Man, I don't know. Are are we up for um, our traditional dollar bet on this? Because I don't think it gets to twenty four eighty seven today. Well, it's got to go quite a ways to get to twenty four eighty seven, but it's got the momentum. Thirty seven so. cents. Yeah, I'm not a. I'm I'm not buying GM up seventy cents. You're trying to get me to buy GM up no, seventy no, I'm cents saying, on the well, day. Trade up there. I, I'm <laughs> saying I'm saying it's going to trade twenty four twenty before it trades twenty four eight. I think I agree with you on that. So okay. I'm, we're not going to okay. be able to bet on that one. I'm I'd probably a fader of this rally on General Motors. No, Sorry I, D. No, I don't want. Sorry I, I D. Be, You're not yeah, giving the love no. to the D. But I'm not buying General Motors. Whenever General Motors, I. Rarely do you see General Motors up over a dollar on the day, and it's up seventy cents right now. So, uh, I'd probably use twenty four fifty as my bogey. If the stock started to, to trade over that twenty four fifty level in the regular session, then maybe I'd be interested in your bet. So maybe use the twenty four fifty for your swing number. We're trading there right now. Um, other stocks. Also, also watch the open on this one too. Watch the pre market high, and then watch the open. And if it opens at like twenty four sixty, and it's uh, trading at twenty four forty in a heartbeat, uh, it might be time to hit the exit button on this one. Abbott Labs. We were talking about these defensive stocks here uh, yesterday. 
uh, or on Friday, how they were selling off. So the defensive stocks basically came in, or they were rallying up, but they really sold off Friday with the whole risk on trade. Everybody's trying to buy riskier assets on Friday. So they sold off a stock like Abbott Labs. So here it was, it made a high of 69.24 on Friday, sold all the way off to 68 bucks, has a ridiculous rally yesterday, rallies all the way back up to 69.16, so fills that entire run and closes up there. Well, this morning they're getting a downgrade here from Jeff, or no, from uh, Lee Rink. So I don't even know who. Uh, Lee who Rink are isn't these? Cunninghams? Yeah, there's, there's, there's some little ones. Well, they're, up, they're, they're still analysts. From? They still know what they're doing. Some of these little ones are better at predicting than the big ones because these guys got to actually make a name for themselves, so they hire some smart people. But I agree with this Lee Rink guy on this one because here's the stock. You know, it was the whole sector rotation thing happening. You get this nice bounce yesterday, and it was an, an, a great opportunity to get out of this stock. And 69.12 is where it closed, and it's trading. Trading down here, uh, well, it's traded 68.41, light volume here, but it's probably going to open down on the downgrade. I think this whole $69 area becomes pretty good resistance here now, so if that stock starts to drift up, I'd keep an eye on that, and that might be a good level here. you got a good bogey to talk about, 69 and a quarter, I would say, is oh, yeah. probably my out. Oh, yeah. I think it's a nice setup to try a short on something like this. I know I'll probably be trying it up here if it gets up in the upper 68s. Yeah, that's uh, that's an all-time high for the stock that it hit at this uh, 69.27 level. Uh, we always like to talk about uh, double tops and triple tops. Lo and behold, you have one here, 69.19 to 69.27. Uh, really, the last two days' ranges, you had the same high, and the lows were only uh, uh, 19 cents apart from each other. So above 69 and a quarter, then who knows where the stock's going to. Uh, it breaks below the 68 level, and you do have some real estate on the downside. Talk about a move, too. Look at that Wells Fargo move. It, we were saying it had real estate on the downside there. It just caught a little downgrade there yesterday. Had this huge run up from the 34 area. It got to 36.5 in two days, which is a ridiculous move for Wells, just running straight up there. But then yesterday opens up and just to keep selling off and gives back a good chunk of the move. I'd love this stock to give back another buck so I could uh, pick it up here in the low 34s because I think it'd be an excellent buyback in the low 34s now. But we still got a little ways to travel here. Some of your financials are weak here this morning. Your European banks, I know Deutsche Bank is trained down a buck. So you do have some of your financials in the pre-market, like Citigroup I think is down almost a percent too. So maybe if you get some follow-through weakness, I don't think Wells is going to go down another dollar, but uh, if, it, if it ever did, it'd probably be a nice opportunity down there. Yeah, we talk about those day, you know, the days where it just travels up through an area and basically from the low 34s catapulted above 36 to 3660, and then when it comes back on a pullback, uh, boy, it goes down just like it uh, it went up through that area. So it could be dicey in here. I don't think uh, I'd be looking at the 35 dollar level as just only to be minor support. And uh, the major support comes in at that 34.10 to 34.21, uh, the triple bottom that we had from last week. And then Facebook here, a similar type of move, just been running, running, running here. And then yesterday opened up at the high, 22.67 I think was the high there, and then just turned around, or 22.75, and then just turned around and started selling off. Yeah, I think uh, I think people that want to be long the stock are kind of like deers and headlights, uh, just you know chasing it, waiting for it to come back under the twenty dollar level. Uh, you've had four higher lows in the stock, uh, so keep an eye out here for uh, this twenty one fifty level. We break below twenty one fifty. Uh, twenty one twenty ninety was Friday's low. Uh, just one other stock uh, before I know we're running a little long in the tooth here, but uh, a good old formation here. We had been talking about this uh, this seven twelve area, seven thirteen area in Google. Uh, you got up there again yesterday to. 71288 yeah. uh Friday 713 uh folks that are short in this stock trying to do it on a swig trade uh you have an excellent reference point here at the 713 level. Yeah, the 713 starting to get thick. You basically have a quadruple top there if, if you look at those charts there if you want to call that whole area 712 713 a quadruple top. Uh, I'd still keep an eye on Apple, too, because if Apple really started to run over the 700 area today, then Google might follow. But this Apple's not looking that good here now, Joel. It's now trading 698.93. Everybody's 
taken out their hats or 700 hats, I think you got to keep your 700 hat in the bag until it trades over it in the regular session. And it has not done that yet. I think you're going to see some institutions still lining up at 700 to get out in the regular session. So don't be surprised if it uh, struggles there a little bit off the hop. I think he might eventually does take it out. But I don't know if it's going to open over 700. Yeah, you know, you probably got uh, uh, you know a couple of these firms that are – now, this is strictly just uh, uh, my opinion that are you know trying to stack a short position in here, or have a client that's stacking a short position, you know, and then they come out with, oh well, we're fully valued at seven hundred, and then the stock you know stock spikes down twenty points, and they get out because uh, I mean this thing just moves on news, not much Headlines. volume, not much market structure to this thing. So uh, you know we've been saying that since three fifty though, and here it is at seven hundred. But uh, on the downside, keep an eye on uh, Monday's low at 694.61 and I know I said we we're going to close out the show but you got to look at this Chevron Corporation chart uh, CVX here has just had a monster run uh, trading down at 95 back in June uh, got up to 118.50 yesterday, uh, closed a little bit weak yesterday uh, Friday's low was 116.48 uh, if you're trying to protect long-term profits here in this stock, uh, I trade below 116.50, and uh, there's two and a half bucks of air in this stock. Yeah, I've just got the intraday chart up there now. You can almost argue this whole head and shoulders thing happening, where you had the 117, and then it got up to 118. Now it's consolidating in the 117 area again. Starts to get down below that 116.50. You're right. There's a lot of air in here, so a little bit scary there. I would keep Apple on my screen, even if you're not an Apple trader here today. Keep it on your screen. It's going to be your tell. If that Apple doesn't break over 700 and start running this market could end up turning over and trying to test that 1449 area so key that apple does take out 700 today i don't want to see another day where it just flirts with it and then starts to pull back here because people it tried to do it yesterday if it doesn't do it today it could start to get weak and a little bit weak here so i would keep an eye on apple as well uh that's our show for today folks uh we will be back with you guys tomorrow have a great trading day